Good morning. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday morning. June 3rd, 2025 is the date. 8.57 uh, local time here in California. Latest activity on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 2.6. Looks like across the uh, Mediterranean over here where that five-pointer struck. Originally a uh, 6.2. Got downgraded there by quite a bit to a 5.8. Looks like a 4.9 over here as well. Earlier this morning, a little bit closer around the Crete area. Got uh, some interesting activity stirring up here in the last couple months, of course, with the ongoing earthquake swarm around Santorini, Greece. Uh, Mount Etna over here across the um, Italy area around Sicily. Uh, I was just looking at the uh, seismograph stations there from today around the Santorini Greece area and still showing quite a bit of earthquake activity uh, locally there to the Santorini Greece area it looks as though that 5.8 from yesterday stirred up uh, a little bit more earthquake activity around the region of the Santorini Greece area uh, so watching that pretty closely uh, of course this has been an event that has been ongoing here for the last couple months with uh, a lot of earthquakes happening and you know, I still have yet to get a total tally of quakes, but this is nothing like what we had seen here in the beginning of the earthquake swarm. We were talking about just massive amounts of quakes each day. I can take you over here and show you guys. Um, uh, there's June, May. I think it was back in, uh, was it the beginning of May? Beginning of April? I can't recall exactly which day. It may have even been prior to that sometime in March. Uh, but we've just had a lot of earthquake activity up there with no end result. No, far as no big earthquake activity, uh, no volcanic eruption, just a consistent earthquake swarm. So it looks like yesterday that 5.8 around the area is uh, further stirring things up here across this region uh, tectonically. So we'll continue to watch that considering there was just a 4.9 here early this morning, a little bit further closer to the Crete area been quite active uh, out here recently 5.8 uh, uh, it's quite a quite a bit of a downgrade there from yesterday 6.2 but it does happen also uh, got a lot happening there across the Idaho area there in the states let's go check this out real quick see what we have uh, got uh, a decent amount this is a uh, for sure an earthquake swarm this is not a main quake followed up by aftershock sequences here uh, the largest magnitude here in the last 24 hours getting up around the 4 range. L latest earthquake shows a 2.2. There's a 3.9 about 6 o'clock this morning. So this is not a main sequence of aftershock events following you know a larger earthquake. This is just a, a decent earthquake swarm up here. Um, it could be leading to something bigger. It may just be general strain out here because of the west coast. Uh, all everything that's been happening out here across Cascadia with a lot of trimmer activity down into the subduction zone. Um, obviously, it's a major plate boundary, right? So you get a lot of the interaction here, uh, the earthquake activity inland away from the plate boundary because of the interaction out here along that plate boundary. And it's just building up a lot of strain well inland. <clears throat> In fact, Yellowstone over here had a little bit of earthquake activity as well from yesterday. Uh, I don't see anything from today, but we're going to double check that and see real quick. Uh, see what we have. Ooh, wow. So I know what those are. Those are going to be the earthquakes there from um, Idaho. They're getting uh, fairly big. So they're showing up there on the Yellowstone uh, seismograph stations there. I don't believe those are local. Yeah, those have to match the uh, time frame of those that four-pointer uh, that was early this morning and then 3.9, 3.9, 3.8. So a couple of these earthquakes that are in the upper three range and the four range are obviously going to show up uh, across Yellowstone National Park. And it looks like that's what uh, is showing up there. Nothing um, local, though. Those are definitely some distant events away from Yellowstone. Uh, so I don't see any further... Uh, earthquake activity there across Yellowstone aside from yesterday that was going to be around the Mary Lake area quite a few small microquakes there uh, showing up in a short amount of time period the USGS did uh, produce those on the uh, earthquake map that's the Idaho map we got to go back over here 
Uh, nothing big that was happening in that earthquake swarm around Yellowstone. Quite a few ones, though, but uh, just a sign here of tectonic stress. And, of course, we could see, you know, any of these fault systems really pick up uh, in terms of producing earthquake activity because Idaho is just littered with a lot of fault systems out here. The Sawtooth Fault System over here, though, had a 6.5 back in 2020. So I don't know if we're looking at any larger activity on that uh, fault system. It's possible, but uh, I'm thinking maybe some of these other faults over here leading up towards Yellowstone uh, may be getting ready to produce some larger activity. But uh, all this earthquake activity related to the strain out here on the West Coast, uh, it's just that's what it looks like. Uh, and some of these quakes here, like I said, they're getting uh, getting up there in the magnitude range. So we'll continue to watch this area closely here. And of course, got to watch the main culprit, the, the leading uh, stress builder up here is going to be the interaction along the Pacific Northwest. It's the Cascadia subduction zone. And nothing showing up there for now. we got one earthquake uh, outside of Mount Vernon, Washington, a 2.9. Let me check out the uh, trimmer map this evening or this uh, morning. Didn't get a chance to check it out last night. It was kind of busy. Uh, 25 epicenters of trimmer across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. But this comes after a month of seeing some elevated trimmer activity all across the Cascadia. 11,000, over 11,000 here in the last month. It's died off here in the last couple days, but uh, the stress has been building out here. Down into Northern California, one earthquake outside of Redding. That was early this morning, up around Shasta Lake, a little 2.2. Nothing big. Uh, the rest of California here looks pretty quiet there across Northern California. Uh, even the Bay Area back to being quiet once again after a number of earthquakes there on the Hayward Fault. Got uh, at least four earthquakes there on the Hayward Fault from this weekend. Quite a few twos on there, but uh, since it's died down a little bit, looks like the movement has shifted down south a little bit here to the um, San Andreas Fault, the creeping section. Showing a little bit of activity here from yesterday. Um, what do we got down here? This is from yesterday as well. That is directly on the park fields. Well, that's, yeah, creeping section. Getting close here to the Parkfield segment of the San Andreas Fault, but not quite. Got to watch this section as well because that's uh, definitely uh, primed here for a six-pointer. The last six-pointer was back in 2004, and regular occurrences of large earthquakes occur on this area of the San Andreas Fault there every 20 to 22 years. So we're looking at that time period right now. Could be seeing something happening on that soon. Uh, Southern California down here, little spotty. Uh, really not a whole lot going on here. This is a little on the quiet side for any given day. I always like to look at these maps, and there's always microquake activity, roughly around maybe 30 to 40 microquakes there in a 24-hour period across the Southern California region. Today, though, only uh, about 17 of them, and that's in the last 24 hours here. Really, most of these are from yesterday even, so a little on the early quiet side. Texas, oil fields, a um, lot of these from yesterday as well. A little handful of them from today, but really nothing big going on. Same for the rest of the country. Uh, let's take a look here at the Earthquake 3D globe, see what we got. There was some movement way up north here into the northeast from uh, early this morning. USGS not mentioning that, but uh, some smaller activity. Well, let's see. Any newer movement looks to be positioned across the Japan area here. Um, up north along this area of the Japan Trench, a five-pointer, but also some other earthquakes in there. Skipping over the Nankai Trough. Actually, it looks like maybe this 4.2 might be in there in the Nankai Trough zone. That's a major subduction zone area that's been building up steam for quite a while. That's uh, some newer activity today. Also getting a little swarming going on there just south of Taiwan. Typical crunch going on there in the typical crunch zone being active, I should say, out here today as always. Uh, some deeper movement underneath the Papua New Guinea area. It looks like a 5.2. It's going to be this, this earthquake right here. 
That's 307 miles deep underneath this region. Could trigger some further escalation of quakes around the area. Those deeper quakes normally uh, have an effect like that. Uh, got some movement down across New Zealand there this morning as well. Deeper activity and some shallow adjustment further along that plate boundary there. So it looks like... Looks like we still may see some larger activity. A lot of threes out here recently, occasional four, but really no major release in pressure across the New Zealand area. That's, uh, I'm sure that's coming. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet, looks like for now. Middle America Trench, the rest of the uh, Peru Chile Trench down there as well. Fairly active, but uh, lots of twos and threes, even some fours out there, but really nothing major in terms of any larger movement to note there across the area today. All right, uh, space weather activity. Looks like that proton event finally decided to die off. Uh, what we're looking at, maybe three to four days of proton events. And if you look at the earthquake activity that we've seen here in the last week, well, you know, I, I think we can say there was definitely a strong signal of relationship between the two. The proton event there slamming into the planet. The proton event hit us first there, and then the CME activity sparked up the auroras. But uh, the earthquake activity was already on the uptick before the arrival of the CME. The proton event hit us first. That's when the earthquake activity kicked up there. We've seen multiple six-pointers, uh, five six-pointers, a couple awfully close there, just below the, the 6.0 threshold. You know, these some of those originally came in as a six-pointer. But either way, that's a decent amount of earthquake activity uh, in the last week. And, you know, a little bit more than normal in terms of the uh, of a weekly count. Uh, but I would say that's a, definitely a strong relationship between getting slammed with protons there from that uh, massive flare. And then also the elevated earthquake activity that followed the events. Uh, but that has died down. The proton event has died down. Looks like there's another flare out on the far side looks like a low grade inflare but that was another long duration event so we may see some protons there uh, kick off here soon yeah, I'm guessing it probably came from this area back here that's the only region I can see that would produce something like that right now uh, let's see that's from yesterday no mention of an M flare on here, but uh, we can check out the movie here of the sun and see where this uh, large flare struck. Gonna zoom it up here a little bit. Don't need to watch it the last 48 hours. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yep, there we go. I think. Uh, I believe that's. Wow, that thing is just producing a whole bunch of flares. If you look back over here across the uh, southeastern area of the sun, just. Beyond that uh, ledge there, what's going on with this thing? It's like taking baby steps. <laughs> what is up? Either way, it looks like we got a very active area out over here on the sun. Popping off a bunch of flares. That is unnamed. There's the image from last night. There it is. Just barely peeking around here on the southeastern limb of the sun. That, uh... Well, it's been throwing off some decent-sized flares, so obviously an active area. We'll have to watch that in the coming days, get a little bit better view of the complexity on that magnetogram. Uh, this area back here is starting to degrade quite a bit. Massive coverage area. That's the culprit of the large M flare and uh, the proton event and the CME activity that slammed into the planet here recently. Uh, but watch this area down here. Looks quite active. So flare threat uh, remains somewhat elevated there, about 15% chance for X flare, M flare at 65% chance. Uh, proton event has dropped to about 50% 50, 50 chance. Uh, we'll see what happens with that, with a bunch of all these, with a bunch of flares popping off right now. It could elevate the protons again. Um, Aurora activity really kicking up last night once again. I went to bed. I just didn't, uh, wasn't feeling too good last night, so I had to go to bed a little bit earlier. And I uh, heard there were some decent aurora sightings once again uh, through northern tier states and uh, even below that. That may continue off and on here over the next couple nights. It looks like it's still forecasted out here a little bit. But uh, nothing big for now unless we get another decent 
CME Earth Directed. Quick glance here at the next close approach asteroids here. Uh, let's see, where are we? Where, there we go. Let's see if there's anything headed to the planet that we need to be made aware of. Of course, got this one here on June 4th. That's a newly discovered asteroid there, 94,000 miles with that one. It's underneath 100,000 miles. It's getting close. But uh, for the most part, everything's safe and at a distance. Even that, you know, 94,000 miles is a, a decent amount. 50-foot house-size asteroid. A severe weather today parked right over the southern plains once again. Oklahoma just getting, just getting crazy with a lot of rainfall out there. They've uh, been getting rain nonstop, it seems like, over the last couple months. Uh, definitely no shortage of water out there. Uh, that looks to be the uh, severe weather area today across Texas, Oklahoma, into uh, Missouri as well. Stretching up towards the Wisconsin area, it looks like. But uh, it doesn't look like uh, any major tor tornado threat there today. A little bit of wind. A little bit of hail threats in there as well. I mean, there's a 2% chance for tornado activity, but we'll kind of keep an eye on that. Tomorrow, a little bit less active, but then day three kicks back up. Uh, just a rinse and repeat cycle over that region. Day four and day five out there looks pretty crazy as well uh, for severe weather across Oklahoma and uh, that same area that's been getting hit left and right out there the severe weather season so we'll cover these as we get a little bit closer it looks like storm uh, storm prediction center picking up on severe weather potentials out there a little bit later on this week uh, for hurricane activity well let's see here we're gonna have to we're gonna have to go back to the previous run because this is not quite loaded yet so this is going to be from earlier this morning but we can still get a shot here see if we get any Hurricane activity there in the Gulf. I know it's getting forecasted, but yeah, it's there's the 18th time period. Still looking uh, possible, but that's a ways out still. That's, you know, a good. That's actually even further than what we had seen there a couple runs ago. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's. Maybe it's not going to forecast like it's supposed to. But either way, it, this is why we double-check these models every single day to make sure that um, things don't change. It looks like things are changing, and that's good news there for the, the Gulf states there. Don't want uh, any major hurricane entering into that water body of water. It is quite warm out there already, uh, so anything that does travel in here will continue to feel itself and... Um, slam into the states as a uh, decent sized hurricane that's if it does happen we'll continue to check back on that though folks uh let's see hawaii give us a quick glance here at the big island of hawaii and the kilauea volcano uh, looks like the eruption there remains paused the pause began here back on the 26th of may been going up but look at this we're uh any should be any day now we're pretty much matching the level observed here just about uh, before the uh episode 23 struck with the eruption there across Kilauea volcano so it's gonna happen any it could happen right now it could happen here throughout the next 24 hours looks like uh, a lot of volcanic gases out there of course that's normal a little hazy out there it looks like of course, uh, the sun just coming up could be fog or a combination of uh, uh, volcanic gases and everything else out there. But again, that eruption could happen at any given time once again. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Uh, have yourself a wonderful Tuesday. Seismograph stations out there look calm and quiet for now. Have a good day. We'll see you guys back out here a little bit later.